Hello and welcome to The Authority of Love. I'm your host, Greg Williams, and today is another fabulous Family Foundation Friday. I like to throw that tongue twister in every once in a while, David. And, and we're joined by our good friend, Executive Director of the Family Foundation, David Walls. Welcome, David. Fabulous Friday to you, Greg. Hey, thank you. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, we told you last week and we started this, we shared with you that we're going to be hitting on this Barna and Family Research Council's Biblical Worldview Study. There's a lot of really good things in it. You, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit on this over the next few weeks, uh, even starting today a little bit. But also we want to update you on the Family Forum and some of the great speakers that are going to be there and some of the things that are going around, uh, going on around our country in line with all this. So David, with that said, yeah. I know we talked about this uh, study last week and we hit just the tip of the iceberg. Take us a little deeper in some of the things you found that are encouraging and maybe a little bit frustrating. Yeah, Greg, you know, uh, j just to remind folks, this is a, a, a new uh, survey that was put out that specifically looks at adult churchgoers, those that attend church pretty regularly. regularly right. One, yeah, uh, yeah. Most of them, you know, uh, w once a week. And, you know, Greg, we talked last week about you know, the encouraging thing that one of the big takeaways was that, that a lot of those that were took this survey want to see their church equip them on these worldview yes. and social issues uh, just because we recognize there's such important issues that are being debated and impacting people's lives. Uh, I think we got into a little bit of one of the other important um, um, parts of this survey that we want to talk a little bit more about today, and that had to do with uh, asking those um, folks that took the survey, do you think the Bible clearly and, and, um, and decisively addresses yeah. important social issues? Uh, and there was some, some encouraging results on yeah. some of those, but just, yeah. to, just to remind it and, and break those down a little bit, the question was asked um, on the definition of marriage, and about 75% of, of, of churchgoers, Greg, said they thought the Bible was clear and decisive. You and I discussed that we uh, some of these would be hard to understand why it's not 100%, right, right. but 75%, that was the highest. Uh, religious liberty, about 69% of people said that the Bible um, addresses that clearly. Divorce, 66%. The morality of killing an unborn child, the abortion issue, 65%. I was uh, a little, um, that one got a, uh, <laughs> that convicts us even more yes, about yes. why we have got yeah. to, you know, equip people on the biblical worldview on, on life. Yes. Uh, homosexuality, whether that's morally acceptable or not, 63%. And then, we, Greg, we get into the, the kind of transgender, um, gender ideology yes. issues. Yeah. Uh, how to know a person's gender. Only 59% of people think that the Bible was decisively clear, churchgoers. Wow. Is transgenderism morally acceptable? Only 52%. And then finally, what types of candidates um, to vote for? Does the Bible give you clear and decisive way to think about who you vote for? Yeah. Only 44%, Greg, and in fact, 30% of those that answer that question think the Bible does not even address the topic uh, at all. Yeah. And I like this, David. It's interesting because it doesn't say what person to vote for. Right. The survey said what type of candidate. Right. And the Bible, I know you and I talked about this, right. and I want you to carry it a little further. We talked about this. The Bible is very clear yeah. on what type of, we call these people public yeah. leaders, public servants. Yeah. Public servants is maybe a better word biblically for it, right? right. But the Bible is very clear on uh, what a leader is supposed to be. Right. What kind of character, what things they stand for, truth and righteousness and holiness, yeah. those things. We're not going to have a theocracy until Jesus returns. Right. But we are supposed to, as Christians, vote and seek out and study and learn in line with God's Word. Yeah. Go a little further with that, David. Yeah, well, you know, um, Greg, in Romans chapter 13, I've got to say I'm, I'm um, thankful the uh, church that I'm uh, my, and my family and I remember at Porter Memorial Baptist Church here in Lexington. Yeah. We've been walking through the book of Romans Ooh. this year, verse by verse, and what a blessing yeah. <laughs> that is. That's some deep uh, stuff. It is, yes, and it's good. we actually just... Um, just went through Romans 13, and it's always a good reminder to, to remember who created government. God is the one who ordained and created government. With a specific with purpose. With a specific yes. purpose. Uh, for our good, to promote justice, general... Yes. Reward uh, the, the, those who do good. Reward those who right. do good, punish those who do evil. It is a, and how we define that. Is it, how do we define good and evil? Right. We go back to the Word. We go back to the Word. Right. And I would argue the, the issues that we just talked about, Yes. Uh, you know, the Bible speaks clearly on marriage, on yes. life, on 
uh, human sexuality, gender, gender. Yes. And so you can say with confidence that those are the kinds of um, issues and worldviews um, um, dynamics that you should be looking for candidates to support that come from a worldview biblical, that represents the exactly biblical right. worldview. Yeah. Now, again, it, you know, this, um, uh, it, it's not, there are a lot of things to take into account when we're looking at who, right. uh, you know, who we vote for. But the other thing, Greg, that we have to remember is we're blessed. I mean, it, it's, it really is uh, almost a historical anomaly to yeah. the freedoms that we have in this country and the responsibility we have to, to elect our leaders. Uh, and ultimately, we talked about, you know, the Bible refers to those in positions of authority. Uh, kings, we're blessed to have elected uh, yeah. legislators. Of, and, by, and, and for the people. Of, by, That's and for huge. the people. Yes. They're to be servant leaders yes. in the mold of, of Jesus Christ himself, looking to, to serve others, but to uphold justice and to promote um, righteousness yeah. because it, this is for the benefit of all people. God's the one that designed yes. us. So when we have laws and policies, as we like to say, and part of our mission here at the Family Foundation, when we have laws and policies that reflect God's truth, it's to the blessing of all people. And David, you, you said something there that I think we, we're not talking, we're talking to everyone who, who will listen, yeah. right? But what we're pointing to is those, just as in the biblical worldview survey, who claim to be not just churchgoers, but Christians. Yeah. Christians have this responsibility right. to align themselves with God's Word. And every one of those issues is clear, which gives us an outline for the types of candidates and the issues that those candidates should stand for in line with God's Word. Absolutely. That's what we've got to get through. It's not a political issues, although it is. It's biblical issues. Right. It's life issues. And I'm not talking yeah. pro-life and, and abortion there. Yeah. I'm talking about how do we live our lives. Right. Yeah. Issues, as, right? As we said, I think last week, Greg, these are these are these are pre-political issues. These, these they are, these yeah, are they issues before government came, was, yes. came about yeah. b before, and yeah. so we should look to how few uh, how uh, you know those that we go to to vote for, and, and in other ways in which we select leaders, right? Whether that be in in business context exactly. or yeah. the church, church yes. context, absolutely. And guess where the Bible says that starts, David, right. in the marriage and family. Yeah. If you cannot do it there, uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue with this yeah. line of thought. But if you're watching on the video, if you're not, you want to go to it. You can find it at loveandlordship.com on the Vimeo page or at KentuckyFamily.org. But David Clawson, we talked about him last week yeah. being at the Family Forum. He literally was one who kind of spearheaded this right. at Family, and he's the, uh, right here in the offices at Family Foundation. Uh, biblical principles for political engagement. Biblical principles for pro-life engagement. Biblical principles for human sexuality. Notice it doesn't say political principles. Right. It says biblical. And with that plug, David, they can come by or yeah. call you all and pick those up, right? Absolutely. Or find yeah, a... We've got copies of those. And as right. Greg, you said, so David Clawson, who's their dir the director of the Center for Biblical Worldview at the yeah, Family Research is, Council. Where this comes from. Yeah, yep. we're a, a public policy partner of theirs. And, and David's going to be coming to speak at our we Kentucky spoke Family week, right? Forum right. on October 7th. And we're excited to have him. I know we, we wanted to go um, mention a few of the other speakers. One of the other ones that we mentioned and highlighted uh, before, but we're just really excited about is Walt Heyer, Greg. Yeah. So, Which is right in line with these issues we're oh, concerned yeah, about, absolutely. right? Yes. So if, if folks are not familiar with Walt and his story, and I'm just going to give a little bit, you have to come to the forum yes. to hear his whole no spoilers. Uh, testimony. <laughs> but Walt lived as a transgender woman for eight years, Greg, and through effective therapy. Left and, his wife and family yeah, to I do mean, that. He's yes. got just a and this is many, many years ago, yes. so I, as I've sometimes called him, he, he's one of the um, um, originals, I, say, I hate to use that term, <laughs> right, right. but I mean, the term detransitioner that we hear a lot, and there's yes. been some powerful testimonies, he had that testimony for many, many years ago, and he has been sharing that, how through, uh, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and through effective therapy yes. based in truth, yes. he was able to uh, be restored to his, his male gender yeah. uh, and his true identity, uh, and um, and now he's used that uh, to help those across the world, yes. literally thousands, uh, mainly through a website that he runs called sexchangeregret.com. But he's yes. also written several books. And I've said this: we had the um, uh, we we were able to have him come to the Kentucky Capitol, and he spoke at one of the kind of uh, 
press conferences and rallies that right. we had, right. Greg, but he just has such a powerful testimony, and I really don't think there's anyone more knowledgeable that understands. He's been through it. Understands right. the the spiritual side of this, yes. the, the mental side of it, understands the dynamics that sometimes cause uh, particularly young kids to step into this arena and there's yeah. a lot of factors related to that just such such a powerful testimony i, I encourage hope folks will join us october 7th and yes. hear his hear his story at kentucky yeah go there in fact but david in line with that yeah w- there's a case in california yeah. in which we not only saw a good victory for truth and righteousness but it revealed some of these things that Walt may be sharing with us, right? What they found out. Yeah, you know, on. there's this is this could be a new a new step in, in the phase. It was actually a, a a family has won or a mom has won a hundred thousand dollar settlement against a local school district in California that had started the process essentially behind her back yes. of socially transitioning Th- that's the child. Key. And this right. is key. You know, this is happening on social media and a variety of media fronts, but in school so many times what's happening is uh, and, and the details in this story, Greg, are just horrifying. Yes, I mean, a yes. targeted, specific uh, um, um, approach of those who had authority over this child yeah. to try to introduce this child into the LGBT and, and ideology. Draw them in. Draw them, draw yes. them yeah. in. I mean, and they so, even followed her Google searches and stuff, right? Right. Those yeah, kind I mean, of things there, in order to see. And once some, they found that. Yeah, there's some shocking yes. things a part of this. Greg, you and I have talked a lot about the effort to ban gender transition as it w- relates to the so-called medical interventions, puberty yes, blockers, yes. cross-sex hormones, surgeries, and, and we continue to be thankful for that. But the, a big part of this, Greg, is the, the social transitioning, yes. and we've got to continue to, to address that issue. So this is encouraging to see yes. at least one school district put on notice to say, you know, this is not right That's to right. even push a child towards the idea that they can identify opposite Without of, of who they are. Without the parents yeah. knowing. That's the parental rights right. side of it that we yeah. talked about too, right? Yeah. So, well, all of that, you're going to continue to hear more of that over the next few weeks leading up to the Family Forum yeah. and some great speakers like Walt and like uh, David Clausen. Uh, I'm looking forward to being there, yeah. uh, David. Absolutely. But we want to close with this. Uh, you've got a special citizen coming out. Yeah. Share with a little bit as we close our, today. Our Kentucky Citizens, one of the main educational publications that we put out quarterly, we're about to, in the process of going to print on our third quarter. Encourage folks, if you don't get that in the mail or you don't get it online, it's a free resource. You can go to our website, KentuckyFamily.org, and sign up. We're going to be putting a putting together a voter guide um, related to the governor's election. Th- just and for them on this one, right? In, in right this now, guide, right? there's yes. going to be a lot of other information the in there as yeah. well, but encourage folks to, to sign up for that publication if you don't already receive yeah. it. Yeah, and it is a, it, the focus of this, and the reason I wanted to talk about it, is that it's specifically focused on the gubernatorial race and the candidates and the voter guide is yeah. for that. You, yeah. The citizen covers a lot of things yeah. throughout the year, yeah. but this one is specially for that. It's going to be good. Uh, if you if you want to pick up a copy, they can come here and get it, or you'll mail one, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Let you know, or if you want to get it digitally, Sign up for the email, Yep. right? They'll get it there. So be sure and take advantage of that. Uh, and, and again, uh, hopefully you've signed up. Maybe your church or your group would like to sponsor a table at the Family Forum. Please do that. More information at KentuckyFamily.org and more information about uh, Love and Lordship and the Authority of Love at LoveAndLordship.com. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned now for Bill Reeser and Encounter following right after this program. And at 1245, my good friend Greg Horn and Hope is here. This is Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.